Hello, my name is Beck, and welcome to a reading wrap up. I'm going to be talking about the books that I finished in October and the start of November. This first book I actually talked about in a recent reading vlog and it is The Rose Society by Mary Lou and I also read The Midnight Star also by Mary Lou. These are the second and third books in the Young Elites trilogy and this follows a dystopian-esque world where the main character is an anti-hero and her name is Adelina. In this world there was a blood fever and the survivors of the blood fever have physical markings from it but they also have superpowers. So our main character Adelina has white hair and is missing an eye and she also has power over illusions. I ended up giving both of these books three stars because I found the narration by Adelina while it was interesting and I liked the story I found her character very over dramatic and she just seemed even though the whole point was the fact that she was evil and selfish she just seemed to go to the nth degree and it didn't have to have be that way the whole time she even alienates people that are closest to her just because she doesn't tell them what she's thinking and I think that leads kind of into the miscommunication trope being my least favorite because if she just opened her mouth and had a discussion half the time she wouldn't be as closed in and angsty about it if she just had a conversation that said though I really appreciate that this kind of subverted what you expect in a YA the main character was not a good person and was not expected to be this miraculous hero with no flaws. So I did like this narration but I just got frustrated by it at some times. When I was listening to The Midnight Star on audiobook I also unfortunately wasn't really invested. I think if I read these when I was 16 rather than when I was 25 I would have loved them a lot more even though I did give the first book four stars. It kind of went mildly downhill for me. I didn't expect all the plot twists that happened in the book but I just wasn't invested as much in the characters as I wanted to be. So like I said before both of these ended up being three stars each. Next I'll be talking about the books that I finished in Spookathon so I did a reading vlog for that and a TBR video for that. I'll link those below if you're interested but I read Risk and Black both by Fleur Ferris. These are Australian young adult books and they're mystery thrillers and I think I enjoyed Black more than I did Risk even though I gave both of them a 4 out of 5 stars each. Risk follows a girl who meets a guy online and goes to meet him and her friends cover for her while she's gone and then she ends up not really coming back straight away and so this really confronts the consequences and decisions of young adults and technology and I really actually enjoyed this book quite a lot. I liked how it didn't shy away from things, I like how the kids instead of trying to fix all the problems themselves went to the police and the police got involved to help. I think it was just a very realistic, even though it was a fictional depiction of what the situation could be and it had quite the right balance of friendship, fear and reality in it and I definitely would recommend this to anybody because even though it's kind of aimed at younger audiences of young adult, the characters are about 16 and I know that Risk is taught in high schools which in Australia is when you're about 13 to 14 years old when you start high school and so I think that was, this is just a very poignant read and I would highly recommend it to anybody. And then Black I don't want to say too much about but it follows a main character named Ebony and in the past three of her best friends have passed away and so people in the town think that she's cursed because of that. This kind of has creepy eerie cult like vibes to it and so it did creep me out a little when I was reading it not because it was scary in the way that a Stephen King book would be scary but it was just scary in how the main character was powerless despite going for help whenever she could. Overall I just really love the honesty and the consequences in Fleur's books. I find that they could be very real situations even though they're fi works of fiction. I definitely recommend them to people outside the young adult age bracket because I think they're really important to read but again I gave these four out of five stars and I liked them a lot. The next book I also finished for Spookathon and I honestly can't believe that I read it in one week. It is It by Stephen King. I'm sure a lot of you already know what It is considering there's a couple of adaptations about it but it basically follows two timelines, one in the 1960s when these kids are about 11 years old and then one in the 1980s when they've grown up and they're going back to the town of Derry where this book is set. The reason they're going back to the town is to make sure they killed it when they were kids and this thing called it is a creature that murders people in the town of Derry and it also heightens the crime rate so I think the crime rate is 60% more than average so people end up dying a lot in this book. This was such a confronting but well written book and I'm really conflicted on how to feel about it. I really enjoyed the writing and the story and I was honestly on the edge of my seat listening to the end but what I couldn't get on board with were the slurs and I don't know I really wanted to love this book and give it five stars and I think I lowered it to a 3.5 in my reading vlog but I think the rating I'm going to settle on is a four stars and I'll explain why. Overall it was an incredible read and it's a very confronting violent and gory book. The themes in this book were really dark and confronting and visceral and they were just conveyed incredibly well but it just made me very uncomfortable so I'd suggest erring on the side of caution if you're a very sensitive reader. 
I really enjoyed this book and I understand how all the themes knitted together to push the plot forward, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with all of them and that I liked all of them, even though I enjoyed the book and the writing as an overall package. So the themes generally made me feel uncomfortable, but honestly, that's the job of a horror book and that's what it did. So just one last thing before I stop talking about this book, I actually found the length of it a little bit too long. I know that I generally read long fantasy books, but I found that the length of this book was a little bit too much. Listening to the audiobook, it was better because it was having something read to me while I was doing other things. Um, but if I found that I was sitting down to read this, I think I would have skim read a little bit of the chunks of the middle. I think between about 60 and 80%, I wanted things to happen a little bit quicker. But apart from that criticism, there's not really much else that I found too wrong with this book. So in the end, my subjective review gives this book four out of five stars. Next, after I finished it, I read things that weren't quite as dark, and that is the rest of the Lunar Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer, Cress, Ferris, and Winter. So if you're unfamiliar with the Lunar Chronicles, they're basically Disney princess sci-fi retellings. Cress follows a Rapunzel-like character who is forced to live in a satellite and she's also a hacker forced to spy on Earth. There's also a character in this called Thorn who we first meet in book two Scarlet and I can't really go into why he's here because it obviously will spoil you for the prior books but Cress and Thorn end up meeting and having to survive together after Cress is removed from her satellite. What really surprised me about this book is that I didn't expect a lot of the plot twists in it and usually in young adult, especially with retellings of fairy tales, you can kind of generally predict what the ending will be, but that wasn't the case in this book or in this series and that's why I really liked it. I ended up really loving Cress and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't really talk much about the plot of this book and I'm very aware of that, but I just... Talking about the plot too much will end up spoiling you for what's happened previously and I don't want to do that. Next I read Fairest, also by Marissa Meyer, and this is book 3.5 in the Lunar Chronicles series. You can definitely skip this one if you want to, but I thought I'd read it because I'd heard it gives you a bit of an insight before book 4, and that was definitely the case. Book 4 is called Winter, and we see young Princess Winter in this book before she becomes the character in book 4. And we also in this book follow Queen Lavanna because this is a novella of her origin. I rated this book purely on my enjoyment of it and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars mostly because I really despise Queen Lavanna. We find out how much of a conniving kind of murderer she is in this book and how she goes from the sister of the queen to being queen of Luna. And then finally I read Winter by Marissa Meyer on audiobook and I flew through this in three days which is kind of incredible. This finale had me sweating as I listened. We get the combination of all of the characters in the previous books, as well as Queen Lavanna and a final showdown, and it was amazing. Even though at the heart of each of these books there's a love story, because obviously it's related to a fairy tale for each book, and what is a fairy tale without a love story? But in addition to these relationships where characters kind of pair off like they would in a fairy tale, we also get the friendships between all of them as well. And I found that the banter and the relationships and the support between these characters is what really drove the plot forward for me. And that's why even though I generally don't go for books with a significant romance in them, that I really loved this series as a whole. I ended up giving Winter four and a half stars out of five and I'm really keen to continue on because I think there's an epilogue called Stars Above and then there's also graphic novels called Wires and Nerve. And I'm just really keen to see where these characters go after the big conclusion. The next book that I listened to was another audiobook and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This has been getting a lot of hype on YouTube and on Twitter recently so I just had to dive in and see what all the fuss was about. This book follows a starlet named Evelyn Hugo who was famous in the 50s and 60s and 70s for her films and she basically contacts this no-name reporter so that she can tell her entire life story to this person and chronicle how she got seven husbands and why at 79 she's now alone. Adult fiction isn't usually the genre that I reach for but this was a really surprising book for me. I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five stars. The last three hours of this audiobook were brutal. <laughs> I didn't end up crying but I was very close. This is just such an incredible story about this bisexual film star who had seven husbands and one girlfriend. It just really conveyed and traversed the social norms of the past and present and what it was like to be a not straight person back in the 50s when you were in a relationship and trying to hide that and having the media chronicle your every movement with the paparazzi. So Evelyn was such like a cunning, conniving character but also had heart and really cared about the people that were close to her. So it was just a really intriguing and surprising read and I expected none of what was going to happen. I also listened to The Scorpio Races on audiobook and this is by Maggie Stevada. I ended up loving The Raven Cycle by this author but unfortunately I gave this about a 3 out of 5 stars and 
and I didn't quite love it as much as the Raven Cycle. This book is set on an island and it follows this mythical horse race. So these horses on this island come out of the sea spray and they're carnivorous. So the people kind of wrangle these horses, force them to be trained and then ride them in this race called the Scorpio races. And it's about this character who is orphaned and she is using her pony to race in the Scorpio races who is not a carnivorous creature. And it also follows this character named Sean Kendrick and he is a horse trainer. It's about these two characters relationship and how they enter this race kind of together and the fallout of what happens afterwards. Because I'm not really a horsey person, I didn't love this book as much as I could have. It definitely had Maggie's trademark whimsical writing and as an audiobook I found that a little bit difficult to connect with. I didn't really um, understand or want to understand the characters motivations. I just didn't find them as intriguing as I found the Raven Cycle. So yeah I just ended up giving this a three out of five stars and it's just another book that's not on my TBR pile anymore. The next book I finished was also an audiobook and it was a really short book and it's called Every Heart a Doorway by Sean Maguire. This book is a short fantasy novella and it follows all these wayward children who go through portals into their own specific fantasy world and then come back and they don't know how to cope with the real world. So we follow one of the characters that has come back from this world as she goes to this school for wayward children. And it also kind of turns into a bit of a murder mystery because some of the characters end up passing away and you don't know how they were killed. So yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because it is a really tiny book. The audiobook was about four hours long and usually an audiobook is about 16 hours long. So it was very short and very digestible. And I know there are other installments in the series. It's kind of like a companion novella series. So I don't think they follow chronologically after book one, but they are set in the same world with similar, I think, feel like interrelated characters. But anyway, the first book, Every Heart a Doorway, I really loved it. I think it was incredible. I found the ending was a little bit convenient and that's why I didn't give it a five out of five stars. If it shell shocked me a little bit more, I would have upped my rating a little bit. But as it stands, I really loved it. I can't wait to continue and I gave it four and a half stars out of five. I also started Wild Beauty by Anne-Marie McLemore and unfortunately I ended up DNFing this book at about 10% into the audiobook. From what I could glean from the start that I listened to, it follows a family of women and whenever they fall in love with somebody, that person disappears. And it seems to be connected to nature and flowers, hence the title Wild Beauty. And this boy ends up randomly showing up and this family of women takes him in. And so from there, I don't know how the story goes. I didn't really like the tone of the writing. I wasn't really invested in the characters. It was very whimsical and I didn't really get enough hooks in me from the story to get invested, which is why I ended up putting it down. And finally, I'm listening to The Ask and the Answer by Patrick Ness. This is the second book in the Chaos Walking series and I believe they're being adapted into a movie or a TV series soon. So I thought I'd jump on and read the second book while I can. The first book is The Knife of Never Letting Go and it basically follows this character character named Todd and Todd lives in this town and in this town all of the men in the town can hear each other's thoughts and they call that noise but Todd one day is out in the forest near the house and he discovers something that stops all noise and so it kind of goes on from there. It's a very high stakes dystopian book and to tell you more about the plot will kind of spoil the story as it progresses because it really relies on reveals. But I'm reading book two, as I said, and it is just as confronting and eerie as the first book and I'm really loving it. And it's probably going to be a four or a five stars. And the first book that I have never letting go was a five star read for me. So I'm really looking forward to finishing the second one. So these are the books that I have recently read. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, but otherwise I'll catch you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>